Hello YouTube. This is the Dale Pirate T140. This is now the main server for me. This has replaced my other two servers and uh, we're gonna take a look at it in more detail in this video. The Dell Pirate T140 is part of Dell's 14th generation of servers. This one features new iDRAC9 remote management and new processor support, faster memory up to DDR4-2666, and more than that. This was the base model with a Xeon E2124 quad-core CPU, 8GB of memory and a 1TB hard drive. This model, however, has been upgraded significantly. The only thing that's still base is the CPU. The hardware specifications of this server are as follows. It still has the Xeon 2124 CPU, 4 cores, 4 threads, 3.3 GHz base, 4.3 GHz boost, 71 Watt TDP of the Coffee Lake family. The RAM configuration is 48 GB, divided into 4 DIMMs to 16 GB to 8 GB, running at 2400 MHz at the moment. The power supply is a beefy unit at 365 watts with gold efficiency. The RAID controller is an H220i made by HP, and the graphics card is a GeForce GTX 1050Ti for a quite low profile. The storage configuration in this machine is quite unorthodox. We have two 4TB Western Digital RED hard drives for the Plex Media Library, a RAID 5 array of 500GB SSDs for the main VMs, and a RAID 1 array for uh, some lab VMs of Kingston A400 SSDs and also a single BX500 for the management VMs for the software RAID. When we take an outside tour of the machine, we find a management port, a USB 3.0 port, as well as a slimline optical drive, and of course all that nice mesh and the Dell EMC logo. On the back, we find a D-sub connector for VGA, serial, two USB 3.0 ports, four USB 2.0 ports, three gigabit ethernet ports, of which one is for the iDRAC remote management, and a vast array of ports for the I.O. area. And that pretty much concludes the outside and inside tour of the Dell PowerEdge T140. Let's take a better look at what the machine is used for by moving over to the desktop and taking a look at what she is running. Let's take a look at the server in question. Right here we're looking at the integrated Dell Remote Access Controller version 9, or iDRAC 9. I have an enterprise license on this that I got off eBay for 20 bucks, so that's a good deal. By default, it does not come with the Enterprise License, so be aware of that if you're interested. As we can see here, the power state is on, it is a Dell PowerEdge T140, and we're running the Dell EMC Customized ESXi version 6.7.0 update 3. The iDRAC firmware version here is very important for those of you that want to run third-party PCI cards. If you run a version that's newer than this one, on a 14th gen server, you will not have any form of control over the fan speed. If you run a uh, graphics card like me, the fan will run at eight, near 80% all of the time if you run a newer firmware than this and you cannot modify it. Currently I have the system running at 30% fan speed because I downgraded to this version and uh, through PowerShell I uh, set it to 30% locked and that seems to work very well. And if you have iDRAC Enterprise you can also go to the, ignoring all of the damn risks, to the remote console here, so you can do remote management properly. And this is, of course, the screen that you get with uh, ESXi. We have the part HD140 here, Xeon E2124 CPU, 40 gigs of RAM, all your general ESXi stuff there. You can also manipulate it uh, using the FN F12, because I have an Apple keyboard. Enter the root password. Obviously, we do not want to actually make a restart, but we can go into the customization options. Like so, just like you would manipulate it when a, a server would be in a rack or, at, or like uh, at your fingertips. Seems to work very well indeed. Let's close out of that. The iDRAC 9 really has a lot of nice options and monitoring. If we go to the cooling tab here, we can see it is running a 30% PWM, except it is not PWM because we've locked the speed. I've set it to minimum power so we can optimize the performance per watt. And, uh, yeah, those are the temperatures. Here we can see the CPU. We have four CPU cores. 
These machines can be upgraded to support up to 8 cores and 16 threads, but uh, those CPUs are pretty expensive. And there are all other options that I just cannot get into because there is so much that uh, Hydrack 9 offers. And as you can also tell, the performance in Hydrack 9 is very, very nice indeed. It is very fast. <laughs> it's a very big contrast compared to older Dell servers that I've used that were very, very slow in their remote management. But anyway, let's get into the VMware side of things. Right now the server is quite pegged in terms of CPU because all the VMs are still booting up. Here we can see a couple of resource pools and this is the main pool here that is not actually pooled. These are all my main VMs. I have a Docker host running PyHole for DNS filtering and it also does the Unify controller for my access point. A Plex VM used for uh, our Plex library for media consumption and such. The GZX 1050 Ti is actually passed through to this virtual machine so we can use hardware transcoding for uh, H.265 content as such. And uh, it really offloads the load of the CPU. It's quite good. Also a Minecraft server that me and my friends use occasionally. Test machine that's not important. This is a file server that I use to connect uh, Windows 98 machines and such to, uh, to a file share. It is Windows Server 2019, but I've uh, set it up with SMB1 support and anonymous sharing just so it can get to the files. This is the main machine that uh, is very important to this server. This is the FS01. It does storage spaces. It is Windows Server 2016 core, and it supplies the RAID arrays that all the VMs run on. This is the management server that I use to manage the storage arrays. And this is the vCenter server appliance that we're currently logged onto. Note that uh, I always name my servers with the IP address that corresponds with that. So I can easily find them on the network. So uh, that is my logic. Here is a lab pool. Currently has no VMs, has a reservation of 20 gigs of RAM, 6 gigahertz CPU. And here is a retro pool for some retro machines. This is Windows Server 20 2003. This is Exchange 2013 or 2003 rather, and this is a terminal server of NT4, just for playing around with. But uh, yeah, just to get to the replacement part that I uh, named in the beginning of the video, this one server has replaced two servers here, the Proline Microserver Gen 10, as well as the uh, home-built Xeon E5 AliExpress server that I uh, made a video on two months ago basically, or three months ago. Yeah, that server is way more powerful than this one in some regards, but this one uh, could consolidate all of my needs in one box that consumes just about as much as the microserver did, and uh, it was just about the same money. I sold the microserver for 250 euros, I sold the uh, server that I built for 250 euros, and then I bought this one for 500 put in a few little upgrades, bought some extra RAM and the uh, H220 uh, HBA and that was basically it. And it runs very very nice, it's very very quiet, it's somewhat efficient, like I said consumes just about as much as the microserver did and uh, overall it's been running for about a month or two and I've been very very happy with it. I think that is basically the conclusion to this video, I hope you enjoyed it, thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys 